Oceans cover 71% of our planet, nourishing and sustaining life. Coral reefs are hotspots of marine biodiversity, and we have one of the world's greatest right on our doorstep. The Mesoamerican reef stretches from the tip of the Yucatan in Mexico, along the coast of Belize, and down to the Bay Islands of Honduras. It is a vast interconnected system of coral reefs, lagoons, mangroves, and watersheds. At its core is the Belize Barrier Reef, the largest in the Western Hemisphere. Our reef is a valuable natural asset, harboring beauty and biodiversity. It provides a renewable source of wealth and protection for our citizens and visitors. In Belize, Coral Reef and Mangrove Associated Tourism contributed 150 to 196 million US dollars to the national economy for 2007 in direct expenditures. Fishing provides both a livelihood and a safety net to many coastal Belizeans. Annual economic benefits from reef and mangrove dependent fisheries is estimated at between 14 to 16 million US dollars. The reef sustains a traditional way of life for coastal communities and provides a healthy source of food, recreation opportunities, and spiritual reprieve. A healthy reef means healthy people. To maintain a healthy reef, we need to understand how it works. The reef is a close-knit community of living things which rely on each other for survival. Herbivores keep the reef free of algae. Carnivores maintain the balance of species. Cleaner fish keep larger fish free of parasites. Everything is interdependent. Turtle grass and mangroves behind the reef support the reef community, providing vital nursery and feeding grounds. They're also home to several threatened species like the Goliath grouper and the manatee. A healthy reef maintains a complex balance between species and their environment. This balance of water, temperature, clarity and chemistry has evolved over millions of years. But beneath the surface, the reef is slowly dying, a direct result of human choices and actions. A 2006 survey of 326 sites throughout the Mesoamerican Reef found that 47% of the reef is in poor condition with key reef structures and functions compromised. Another 6% is critical, leaving little hope for recovery. 41% is in fair condition, which means they are capable of either degrading further if the stressors continue or improving if stronger protections are quickly put in place. Right now, only about 6% of the reefs are in good condition, with none ranked as very good. These healthy reefs are reservoirs of reef resiliency scattered throughout the region. From these seeds of hope, our reef may be able to recover and eventually spread into surrounding areas. How and why has this come about? There are many reasons. Over the past 50 years, the reef has been gradually degrading. We have taken out more marine products than we can replenish. We're using fishing methods like fish traps, spear guns, and nets, which used intensively are unsustainable. In the last 15 years, this deterioration has increased rapidly, fueled in part by climate change. Warm waters have bleached and killed coral. Carbon emissions have passed into sea water, upsetting the chemical balance needed for reef growth. Warmer water also brings stronger hurricanes which threaten our coastline and destroy coastal communities. This increases the value of mangroves as important buffer zones against storms and flooding. This protective service is being threatened throughout the region. Mangrove keys are being destroyed by clearing, dredging and filling. The silt is ruining critical nursery habitats and drifting out to the reef 
smothering delicate marine life, including corals, all in the name of short-term profits for few at the long-term expense of many. An extreme example of this is Belize's Pelican Keys inside our World Heritage Site, where a magnificent and unique reef mangrove ecosystem has been severely damaged by such development. Land clearing in the watersheds has accelerated powerful flash flooding rivers, which carry silt and agrochemicals to the reef. Rapidly developing coastal communities and aquaculture produce sewage, nutrients, and solid waste that can contaminate coastal lagoons and reefs. Coastal communities are growing throughout the region with increasing local and tourist populations. The demand for seafood from both visiting tourists and the local market is on the rise. Fishermen must now go further and work longer hours to find fewer and smaller fish, lobster and conch. Much of our supply of whole fish and fillet now comes from the smaller, colorful members of the reef community, especially parrotfish, which are so critical to reef health. The ecological balance is further upset by the removal of top predators like sharks. We cannot sit back and allow this to happen. We no longer have the luxury of time. What can we do? Governments can demonstrate leadership, implement coastal zone management plans, and provide economic incentives for conservation. Private sector can adopt codes of conduct and better management practices that reduce environmental impacts. NGOs can continue monitoring the health of the reef and educate residents and tourists on the importance and vulnerabilities of the reef. Everyone, watch what you buy. No seafood that is out of season or undersized. Don't eat endangered species like turtles and glad grouper or kiwi species like parrotfish. Learn more about coral reefs, get involved in local conservation efforts, and educate others. We're literally eating away our future. The very fabric supporting our intricate reef system is being picked apart. Whether it falls into total degradation or recovers some of its former glory depends in part on our decisions today. The choice is ours. <laughs> Wa mala le